Good morning, YouTube family. Um, I started a video yesterday um, uh, called The Honeymoon is Over. Basically, just kind of talking about things that are going on after you come out of the orientation. But I got cut off. I had a phone call to come in and uh, and, I, and I just got disconnected. And you know, I haven't learned how to edit and do all them little things with the video. So this is a follow up from that because I didn't get a chance to really finish what I had to say. And I got some information I feel like could be very valuable to you. Again, my name is Timothy Chisholm, an ambassador for Ashley Furniture. And I am uh, currently uh, doing videos, basically just catalog, uh, cataloging my experience from uh, the beginning up until this particular point. Uh, right now, again, I'm gonna talk about a few things that uh, pretty much happened after you've gone through the orientation. And um, once you've uh, gotten back to your DC and you're ready to get your truck assignment. So again, I wanted to just kind of pick up where I left off at yesterday. If you get a chance to watch that video, go back and watch that video and then you understand some of the things leading up to what I'm gonna talk about now. Also, I have some other videos on there that might be helpful to you uh, if you want to kind of get a, learn a little bit more about the process of being onboarding with Ashley Furniture. And I just want to make this little side note that I was just talking to a driver a, a minute ago. He's an owner operator, just like I used to be. And I mean, dude said those rates are just bad, guys. And I'm telling you, and girls, that you know, um, it's just it's just tough. And we was talking, I was, of course, I was telling about Ashton and uh, he was asking me if it was a D.C. Uh, area, uh, you know, if he lived within that radius. And I told him, look, just give him a call. They might, you know, work out something. But there is a uh, warehouse location where I am now, unloading right now behind me. So I, I don't know how all that works, but, you know, most definitely you can give him a call. And the um, recruiter will most definitely let you know whether you uh, within that perimeter, you just never know. So give them a call. Again, my name is Timothy Chisholm. My uh, work ID number is 196127. And again, that's for referral purposes. If you decide that you want to come on board and um, information I'm giving you is helping you to make up your mind, uh, you know, just let the recruiter know. And that way they can log me in. And um, and then when you come on board, uh, you know, call me or whatever. When you if, if you if you decide to come and you on your way, just you know, call me or email me or text me or message me or you know, respond to this uh, post, and I'll contact you. And then we can be, you know, we can kind of uh, talk through the whole process. And, and like I told you all before, you know, uh, I, I'm just willing to share the referral fee with those who decide to come on board because I know how it is when you're trying to make that transition. That little extra money will help really kind of while you going through orientation because that week you're not going to get nothing but $100 a day for the orientation. That's $300. So, you know, uh, every little bit helps in this economy right now. So look, uh, it, again, Ashley is a great place for the, to, to work. You know, I, I haven't been here five or 10 years, I ain't even been here two months. But I do know about the trucking business and I do know about companies and, and I just have a good sense for the places I've worked. I've never really worked at a person, place that I just like, oh, you know what, I didn't, I made a bad decision. No, I, I mean, I've always made the right decision and sometimes that's based upon your personality as a person, as an individual, your work ethic and stuff like that. So, again, all right, let's 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 get right in it. Um, let's see. I got some little notes here, so you're going to see me go back and forth to that. We done talked about the referral pay. Okay, yeah, so once you get back to the D.C., you know, you got your truck assignment. You're going to meet with the, uh, you're going to do a little meet and greet with all of the uh, upper, upper, upper management and uh you're gonna meet with your team because we all have a team you know i have a backhaul team and they have a team of people who actually uh you know send me out from my dc um you know i do point to point that means you know ptps point to point and they 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 they're doing their job and that's one thing about teamwork teamwork makes the dream work right so i have faith and trust and believe in the team that have been assigned to me an opportunity to meet them and we know we just you know I just you know just share with them you know hey I'm a go-getter and um, I have a, a goal I always want to try to meet you know 3,000 miles a week if I can get that that'd be great 
But if not, let's get as close as I can to that because that's my goal. I always shoot for the max. Whatever that max is, I'm gonna shoot for that and some if I can. Um, of course, you can always, you know, you gotta get your reset in there so you can do whatever you can do within that reset. Uh, I mean, you know, with that, with your 70 hours. So I had a chance to meet the team and uh, they get a feel of you. You exchange phone numbers. You get the numbers of all the people that you're gonna be pretty much communicating with and. Uh, so I got my, I got, oh, ouch. So I got the numbers to all, you know, they give you a little, little pamphlet when you finish in the orientation. And you, you know, you can, uh, you know, jot down the, the, all the phone numbers that you need here. Can you see that? Okay. And that's going to be the assistant fleet manager. You get that contact, your fleet manager, the senior operation manager, your safety compliance manager. And, um, and then you're going to have uh, some other names, which I have uh, two, which they are responsible for the, for my backhauls. So, you know, I call, I start out calling the ones at the bottom. <laughs> That's how I do it. I'm going to start calling the ones at the bottom. And I don't call unless I'm calling to see if there's another load uh, uh, that I haven't gotten over my people in there. But they're pretty, they're pretty good about keeping you uh, with, with, with keeping your work on your on your on your computer and it's also gonna be on your phone because you got an app that you use you, you know on your phone and you go through and um, and it, it has the load your all your information very streamlined people I mean the one that you completed the one that's pending the one that you confirm then with your pay every load that you confirm you go back and approve it then it goes into your approval category which means that's what you're gonna get paid for so I mean it's a pretty good step by step so truck assignment you come back to your DC you meet with all your team members who are going to be responsible for uh, us serving Ashley as a, as a team now I'm here to serve at the pleasure of Ashley Furniture not Tim but Ashley Furniture that's just the way I look at it I go wherever they send me it really doesn't matter to me um, but they've been keeping me in a nice region area because we all have a region but sometimes they did you know state that you depend on the needs of Ashley furniture you might have to venture out a little bit so I look forward to it actually you know because I don't mind doing that I don't you know I'm a I'm a driver I'm an operator this is what I love to do so hey uh, as long as you keep me moving and uh, I have no problem with that so you kind of really got to have that kind of mindset so that way when something come up and they you know it's out of your norm you know you know well, I want to go over there do, 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 do. Ugh, man stop all that whining you are a professional truck driver that's what you do so do your job man and, and, and you never know that that load may open up some other better loads for you it just may just Sometimes people want to see what you're willing to do for the team. If you can't take one for the team, then you know you're gonna you're gonna probably be that's gonna that's not gonna look good on your resume, especially when that dispatcher you know is is trying to keep you moving and you know and the first thing you say is I don't want it you know or you know I'm tired on this and that there look here man uh, you're a professional this is what you're supposed to be doing you're supposed to be on go ready to go. Unless you got something going on that you need to go home take care of, and then you tell them. You know, I got a situation. I need to be home on Tuesday, and uh, so far it's looking like they're going to be able to help me with that. I, because I didn't want to come home this week. I, I can work through the weekend, and uh, and I can even work the holiday, which is Monday. And uh, but I need to be off Tuesday. So right now I'm scheduled to get in tonight which is Friday, uh, back at the DC and Air Crew, and hopefully they got another load that I can go out with Saturday and, you know, drop somewhere maybe, hopefully, bring back an empty or a loaded trailer and uh, or keep moving Sunday and then route me back Monday. That's my prayer, people. I hope and pray it works out that way. If not, then I will figure out something else truck assignment so you get your truck assignment once you go to the shop and uh, meet the shop manager and uh, they're gonna 
give you show you your truck and you're going to have an assigned parking space this is another great thing you're going to have an assigned parking space for your truck so when you come in from your runs and you get ready to go on your reset you know you're going to come in and you're going to go and you're going to go through the inspection and once you go through the inspection you know something wrong with the truck or trailer something wrong with the truck you write it up and then that way they can get it to the shop mechanic and they can work on it while you're at home and then you come back your truck will be ready to go or if there's something wrong with the trailer before you drop the trailer they want to make sure that it's ready to be loaded so that way they can put another load on that trailer and they just keep on moving that's how that's how it works you know you just you go through the inspection and once you go through the inspection is everything is good you go over to the to the and drop it wherever they assigned for you to drop the empty or if it's to be out of service they're going to tag it they're going to put it out of service and that way they can get over there and work on the trailer and then once you do that you go over there to the um to the office the um front desk when you uh drop your paperwork off uh and on your paperwork make sure you put all the specified information that they're going to tell you that they want you to put on the paperwork and basically you turn it in and uh you know you talk to the people there and if you wanted to go upstairs and talk to your uh fleet manager or your uh, uh backhaul manager or whoever you want to talk to to just confirm some things you, you know you're welcome to do that they have a pretty much open door policy they don't mind talking to you they don't mind you coming upstairs and um you know the, you know uh they, they they're rather for you to do that um uh, some people i've you know here today you know they don't you know force calling in yeah i mean like i told you the other day you know they're busy people and sometimes they call you right back and sometimes they might not um uh, but if it's an emergency you just be persistent till you get to someone that will take care of you but once you get somebody on the line they're going to pretty much take care of you so don't be you know again this is just for future references if you come on board yeah man they ain't answering their phone this and that because they ain't, look i call like i call about five six people and uh i didn't get no answer and uh chris he called me back and then i got through to linda and then once i got through that was it you know doing it's okay we'll work on it. i like okay cool and next thing i know beep 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 so they updated boom 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 so hey that's all i wanted it wasn't no big deal because i know that there are uh other uh, uh drivers also that are in line and they're working with so you know they're going to work according to the priority need of, of ashley furniture um not that they don't care but that's just the way it goes so i wouldn't be naive to think that you know every time i call you know, they're going to jump through loops and hoops just to satisfy me. But the more I work and the more I prove the kind of guy I am, you know, you'll be surprised what that does for people. People are willing, if you're willing to work with people, people are willing to work with you. And all depend on you as an individual. Again, personality says a lot of two. <laughs> a lot of two. <laughs> it says a lot about you. And your work ethic, your work ethic also says a lot about you. So if you got a good personality and a good work ethic, then you're going to get along fine with everybody because, again, everybody just want to do their job. So nobody's just there trying to stand in your way just to stand in your way. Uh, you know, uh, you know, things do happen, though. I understand that. So you get your truck assignment. But once you get your truck assignment, someone is going to go out there with you to do a walkabout inspect the truck to make sure that the truck uh is in satisfactory condition or also just like when you go and rent a car they go out that way if you see any scratches and the dents anything torn you're going to make note on that paper because that's the one that they're going to use when you get ready to turn that truck in for whatever reason and uh then they're going to go back to there and they're going to say well it's a big dent on the door well if it wasn't on there when you you didn't you didn't state that it was on there when you uh sign the truck out then that's on you that means that it happened under your watch right so when you when you get your truck assignment make sure you do a very careful walk around can is not going to rush you you know and nothing like that you know those guys they're they 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 good at what they do and uh, they tell you look make sure he said that way it won't come back on you you know you know little scratches wear and tear that's that's just normal like treat you know tree limbs and scratch the side of it in the hood or whatever or you know whatever but if there isn't some just obvious 
damage, you need to make sure you write it on that inspection form. Um, and so I wrote up a few things, you know, that I saw that needed to be, you know, uh, noted so that that way, you know, again, if anything happened, I get ready to turn it in. They know who to who to put the blame on or, or who's responsible for the damage, actually. So um, again, so you get your, you go through the truck inspection, and once you sign that paperwork, I'm telling you, once you sign that paperwork, you have accepted that truck in the condition that it's in, stating that it is. It has this or it doesn't have it. So just make sure you just open the hood, walk around, look at the tires, just make sure everything. And I'm going to tell you honestly, everything is going to be right. They're going to have good tires and brakes and all that kind of stuff. Oil change already going to be taken care of. Fifth wheel greased up real good. Inside be clean now. I mean, they go actually go through the truck and detail it for you. Uh, you know, that's what they did. In, in some cases, they might not be able to. To get on it right away because your truck might be coming in while you're there at the uh, DC because you know that's just way it is and you might have to wait a, a few days you know uh, one guy I know he uh, that went through the uh, orientation with us he had to wait I guess about a week before he actually got into his truck you know but some people can do that I mean I've been like mmm give me something i need to be going to work until my truck get in i don't care if it's a day cab let me do ltl or something you know what i'm saying i'm just that kind of guy man when it's if it's some work to be to be done if it and if i can do it and then it, it and you know then i want to do that until my truck come in because if not you know i that's just you know i'm gonna go ahead to find some work to do until it come in i i go ahead to, i have to go do something but everybody you know hey you got it like that you, you know hey you got it like that i ain't mad you know i used to have it and like that until this economy turned around and tanked everything and but it's all good so you go through the, the inspection sign the paperwork you get your truck and then once you get your truck guess what you get at that point uh, okay i talked about you did the meet and greet right truck assignment oh yeah the uh talked about inspection uh oh it's sign parking spot yeah so the shop personnel is going to sign you a parking spot and it's going to have a number on there and that's where you park your truck when you come in and then you park your personal vehicle too safe secure lot man fenced all the way around it's where they keep all the trucks at somebody's there pretty much around the clock so you really don't have to worry about that uh and it's off to the side because the shop and stuff is this is the egg crew i don't know where yours is going to be at but you're going to have pretty much the same setup um wherever your dc is and so you're going to have designated parking for you and for your truck so when you come in you pull your car out and put your truck in boom that's it you go home you turn your work order or request in so when you come back they've been working your truck I'll give you an example i got in last week my uh apu apu unit wasn't working properly you see now i just think i used to I'd try to figure all that out i'm out there tinkering and stuff trying to see what's going on that's on uh on operator stuff because you know you just try to make it work uh but it, it felt good to just come in and write up a work order and uh i guess i wasn't so used to just kind of treatment well, when I even when I got in, I like, man, I told my wife, I said, babe, I hope they haven't been worked on my truck. I said, because uh, it had a, a water leak, right? And I had to put water in there like it was uh, hit a curve, turn a curve, so I'm going to get that little sensor to make it sure it's low in water, but it actually is not. Well, well, it was, but then it come back up. Anyway, long story short, so I got there uh, after my reset, pulled up. So I could tell they had worked on it because I saw that grease on the fifth wheel. And guess what? Man, it had the APU unit running. <laughs> My truck was the running, and it was cool when I got here. What? To show me that that bad boy was working properly. Uh, and it fixed the water leak, and he put the work order in there, and it showed what the, they did. He said they fixed the water leak, and APU unit is working properly like it should. I ain't got to know what they did. All I wanted to do is work. 